to freaking Lido. Welcome to San Antonio Musicians Talk Show Network, the only talk show that really exists because we can. Well, alrighty then. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, yeah. You can talk. How do? <laughs> Thanks for having this us. Is a, this is a Scorpio show, guys. This is my birthday month. Uh, a tribute to Johnny Salcedo's lost weekend last month. All of you guys here were all a part of that. And that's why I decided to have this show. Because I was so impressed with the spirit of all of us that were there. And, and you got to admit, it, there was a groove going on, no? Oh, yeah, definitely. There's definitely something going on here, man. Yeah. It was, it was a good so, night. starting off with Dexter Haskins. Pronounce your name right, yes, right? Yes, Dex, sir, yeah. how the hell are you, man? Good, John man, Jay? Good. Thanks for having me over. I'm still, still asleep. I was waking up. I got my coffee. I'm good, man. All right. John Jay, graduate 75? Yeah. Wow. Hey, you've done some research. I don't even think I no, put that. No, just I look I it up on public. Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> you, I went to YJ. Didn't even know. It was once a YJ back no then. Way. YJ. <laughs> no way. No way. What, did you Google right. him? What's up? Yeah. No absolutely. way. Why well, not? You didn't go to John Jay High School. I did. I you did. You didn't graduate in I 75. I false information here. Okay. I would have gone to Lanier. Okay. Would have gone to Burbank. Why not going to Jay? Well, that's something. But he also went to uh, to to uh, what was it some some uh, college uh, SMU. I did an extension service of SMU. An extension service. Extension. You know when an extension service is pretty much right. Uh, it's like alternative school. Okay. That's, that's right. There you they go. They don't let you in. <laughs> no, they don't let you in. It sounds on sexual campus. to me. I don't know. <laughs> Extension service. I'm not really a well, student. I don't know. Yeah, it was, was pre the blue pill. <laughs> pay so your ass off. I needed, I needed that back then. Yeah, no, you probably it didn't need it back then. Yeah, right. right? Yeah. It was yeah. a it's a technical school. It was their uh, SMU's uh, technology. But Dex, from '75, you're you're like one of the newcomers up on in here, man. I'm not. <laughs> well, you're the youngest. <laughs> yeah. So welcome to the Senior All Citizens right, yeah, Club. <laughs> <laughs> We're yeah, all was, senior citizens here, like, man. Oh, man. Right. We're like Johnny. He was saying he's now Medicare eligible. I'm Medicaid. I just <laughs> 66, man. I just got Medicaid yeah. eligible. I don't well, know what the hell that means. Well, congratulations, because when well, I get I there, know. I'm gonna gr- I'm, I'm gonna, gonna retire from me. work. Right? I think me. it's government <laughs> sponsored health care. Yes. I think they're gonna kick my ass. Probably it, so. Now, that's not in the Bible. Well, it is in the Bible. Ass is in the Bible, so yeah. we can get away with that one. Well, I, I mean, uh, I showed my AARP card when I walked in, so that's what we're good. <laughs> I'm at that level now. They sent it over there, so I'm good, right? He's, uh, he's being accepted. <laughs> I haven't got all the benefits you guys have, but yeah. I'll, I'm, I'll, get, I'll get there. And Jerry it. Doyle over here, man, my, my brother drummer. You know, I, I had to turn him on to these drumsticks that were given to me by Ernie Durawa, my dear friend Ernie from the Texas Tornadoes. I did him. About three, four weeks ago from Austin. Great show. Uh, Just like this one, Jerry. Any moment, are you doing okay? I'm okay, man. How about you? (laughs) (laughs) You know, that's how they say to answer that question. How you doing? Fine. How about yourself? It's like, but throw it on the other person. Why not? Ah. (laughs) Hey, but brother's sick today. He was ill. He was going to be right next to you. Yeah. Brother took ill. And uh, he's not feeling well, so he had to stay home. Uh, shout out to the twin right now before we get on. But you're Love representing. You, better. You're, yeah, man. So you're representing today. And how do you feel? I about feel good, it? man. I appreciate you having me. Sure. Now, who are you representing? Insomnia, Pig Nation, uh, the Doyle Brothers. <laughs> how many uh-huh. bands have you played with? Oh, oh, ultra. Oh, man. Somebody <laughs> help me here. How many? <laughs> Well, not to date myself, but I did my first professional gig in 1973. Uh, Jeff and I did. Really? And 73? so many bands since then. I've been in one band with Tom here uh, in no Sonia way. for seven years. Y'all played together? With Ultra. Oh, yeah? Yeah. With, yeah, Larry oh, so McGulpin. You came and they, they Larry pulled McGulpin you into Ultra, Ultra, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, they couldn't have picked yeah, a better guitar player. I'm telling you, you're a slasher, yeah. man. Yeah. Kill. I mean, I was, I'm a drummer. I was I'm in drums. I, I recently yeah. you're by the drums. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, you're a fabulous drummer. That's what I meant. The other guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's the other brother. <laughs> Can we edit that? Yeah. No. Hey, it's in. Honest, man. It's you happened more than it. once. <laughs> ask him. Ask him. How many oh. times has that happened? How many times has <laughs> it happened? Yeah. I mean, really. Did what happen? Well, you look like your brother, damn it. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I can say shit? Yes, okay. <laughs> that's okay. yeah, that's permissible. Um, if I had a nickel, I'll just answer nickel? it that way. If yeah. I had a nickel, well, we, I would have a house full of nickels. 
<laughs> and no bank would take them. <laughs> that would be so old. So yes. this is like this <laughs> old school. Like, half Bit, of these are wooden. What are we doing this here? Is now, Bitcoin, man. <laughs> uh, about the sticks that you've let me hold. Yeah, now listen, hold on. Let me ask the question. Okay. Um, <laughs> what do you think about those sticks of which my dear friend Ernie Durawa from the Texas Tornadoes just recently gave to me? I'm sure they work perfectly for him, and that's great, because I know he's a great drummer. Yes, he is. But to me, these are toothpicks. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? Uh, these seven, are toothpicks. Eight. These are toothpicks. Uh, now, share them with our, with our listening audience here. Ch check these out. You ever seen a stick like this? I think this he is, paid half price, this, uh, because these are promotion sticks. These are C7s, right? The, uh, Forget it. I don't are? think they have a size for that. Uh, that I think they cut the. I think they cut one drumstick in half and then made two. So they made four. <laughs> they took a pair of my sticks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And and shaved them down on a lathe. I'm telling you, one of the my sticks eights. is both of those. Yeah, and 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 Jeff is going to be using two Bs like you did when you were in band in high school. Well, in yeah, this right. case, that's, that's that, what I use. Two Bs. Yeah, the yeah. telephone Two poles. B or not yeah, two B. Two Bs. <laughs> that's all actually, the hard rock drummers use, two Bs. Tree two B or not yeah. two B. In this case, you would have to use four drumsticks, two in each hand. Yes. I would Which just tape them together. Pretty yeah. much be, yeah. Ernie, Ernie, be can very I unique. Another set? <laughs> we want to try that. <laughs> we want to try that out. <laughs> yeah, because duct tape works know. for everything. Inquiry yeah. minds. What are you playing nowadays, man? Uh, what do I play? Yeah, you're still playing that Ludwig, aren't you? I have, well, actually, I still have them. Okay, okay. My original white double bass set with the huge bass drums that I got way back in 1930. Sure. Uh, <laughs> I still have them. They're in my garage. Uh, I still have my red Vistalite set. Okay, cool. My early 70s favorite. Vistalite set, which is, yeah, it's, it's rare. and But it's, it's road-worn. I like mine medium. Yeah. I, I've retired them. Yamaha. <laughs> Especially with the red, guys. it's like a little red. <laughs> I retired them. I got to go recently and buy my first ever brand new drum set. No way. I've got a set of uh, DW Oxblood Red. You're one of those color. DW guys? Huh? <laughs> Everybody plays DW, man. Oh, man. They're, they're, they're getting filthy rich. I got maple. I got a black. I got a black. They are. Set. Well, I, I bought I bought some Yamaha, man. I mean, they'll, they'll rival just about any other set. Those are good drums. Yeah, you know, it's depending yeah. on how you tune them. As far as I'm concerned, as a drummer, you know, some people don't tune their trap. I like to tune my trap set to whatever it is I'm playing. You know, that's that's about normal, isn't it? I, I tune mine mainly to. I found that that different drums uh, sound different as far as their tuning. Even if that's like if you, you buy two Buicks that come off the line with the same specifications, the cards are going to be different. And the sticks don't help. Yeah. The toothpicks. <laughs> <laughs> Dexter, you okay? Yeah, on my drums, these were just... <laughs> He's like, I, 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 I. I'm, a, I'm a vocalist, but I'm like... <laughs> He's a vocalist, all of a sudden he's off. <laughs> Like, you know, I don't know anything about these And, and listen, we have to too. bring in Tom now. You know, is somebody that I love dearly, of whom I have called uh, uh, Larry on more than several occasions, which is really funny because yeah. that's how this weekend started when, when you were doing Fitzgerald's. I ran up to you and I said, hey, Larry, what's going on? Because somebody pointed and said, <laughs> there's Larry McGuffin. And I thought you were him. So and, tell me the story about and, that, and, Tom. And I was walking out to my Conchola. truck, and, 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 and there was, yeah, I said, "This is, yeah, and I am Tom Conchola." And and this guy walks up to me and says, "Hey, that was a great gig, Larry McGuffin." And I was like right in the middle of a handshake, yeah, yeah. and I'm going, "Yeah, it was often, it was awesome." I tell him, "You don't, but, you don't but look." But I'm not Larry. <laughs> yeah, I said, you, "Larry's over there." You haven't, I said, you haven't changed very much, but I was lying, I was lying through my teeth. I was lying through, I was saying, you haven't changed much, you Damn. still look the Damn. same, man. He's talking out his ass, that's what he's doing. But it was so funny, all of a sudden he goes, well, everything's cool, man, the only thing is, uh, Larry's over there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, hell. <laughs> and I told him, come on. We got him off the hook. Like, come on, man. We'll go, we'll go this, grab Larry's this, right this over was, here. I mean, so, I'm telling you, this Now you know bad. how it feels. Yeah, I do. And, this and, was, this hey, was bad. Hey, Jeff. Yeah, man, how you so doing? Yeah. <laughs> this was bad. And this You're man. Brothers, I don't, well, I don't feel so bad about that. You, you, you look like your brother. 
You look like y'all could <laughs> That's what twins well, they're do. They're twins, for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> they're twins. Well, That's why they look alike, I, you I, dummy. I tell you right now, I learned, I learned something <laughs> Tom, while I was here. I mean, and, Larry. And I, and I played gigs with this guy. And you don't even and, know and it. He, and he never, <laughs> I never understood that he graduated from John Jay High School. I graduated yeah. from John Jay High School. Should have been 79. What? But I was I was going to, to like in the middle of the night, going to gigs to go see Jerry play. So you failed. <laughs> so you so, with, so, with, so with, you failed. So emerald you didn't at, cut. At, at the razzle dazzle and, and my and my last year of school was So just, you failed. Yeah. You failed? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, how do you it feel was, about that? It, it, Being a failure. <laughs> Not bad. It was it was good. You know, I would go to the smoking area. It was John Jay. It almost happened yeah, to me. It was John Jay. Yeah, but no, but I got, John Jay. It was yeah, all right. I got a caveat. Juan Jay? It was Juan Jay, yeah. Juan yeah, Jay. Juan, so it really didn't matter I, too much. I used to call it Juan Hay, but anyway, but it, it was Jay. I went to Fox Tech we, to graduate. My dad and, went to Fox Tech. Thomas, I mean, I was going to say, yeah, Jefferson. I went to Jefferson and Fox Tech. Shout out to all my alumni from Edison, Fox Tech. Lee, yeah, you, I had to go to all of these schools in order to graduate. Yeah, uh, you, you guys aren't going to believe where I went to school. I don't even want to know. I'm not sure. But take a guess. You're not going to believe it. Oh, uh, I, I know. I know. John Jay. Churchill. <laughs> Churchill. What did you say? Churchill. John Alamo Jay. Heights, class of 1978. Oh, say who? Say who? Oh, yeah, nine. Oh, nine. Oh, yeah. Yep. Now I from understand where I missed everything. It. That, see, I missed it. From where? Huh? From where? Alamo Heights, class of 1978. I love Niner. Alamo Heights, man. I hated their football team because they always, <laughs> they always killed That's us. That's because we beat you. That's why. <laughs> Every freaking time. But, well, you know, it, Alamo Heights had all the marshals, you know. In, in 79, I was we were supposed to graduate. We playing our casino amps. Which would have been right there with, with Jerry. And, but, but I actually graduated in 80. And my last year in high school was really Can you hear Tom I okay? go to the store okay. and buy beer. When no, I was buy, 18, so yeah, my man, whole was, senior year, I was you were that really was popular. And, yeah, and, that was and, our and trend, it was though. like, hey, man, I got a bag, and I'm a buddy. My, I got my mom's Cadillac, and I got 20 bucks. Get Tom. <laughs> we're, go, we're going to the lake. <laughs> the hell with this school thing. And, and that happened so often oh, that I, the last two months of school, it's when called, all the cool senior skip days were happening, Larry, they came and got me and told Larry, me I could it's not get out. skipping out, Larry. Yeah. <laughs> Let, I, mean, no, Tom, let, I don't know. Larry uh, might have skipped uh, out. I don't know, but, he, but but I didn't. Well, he's gonna know when he sees the show. No. Oh. What's your name? Conchola. Conchola. I mean, just the way it sounds, right? The, yeah, that that is it, Conchola. The, and that name I comes from names, the right, Pyrenees Mountains between France and Spain. There was some people who lived up there named Conchola. They were extremely good horsemen, and they came over to Texas to. Work at the McFadden Ranch what is the story. You? What happened to you? Yeah, you the, failed, and, yes, and you, and that's the story. How, how, however, from what what's <laughs> really told among the the uncles and cousins from way back is what they were is where they were really good with horses that they were really like stealing horses. <laughs> it's what they were. Wow. Yeah, they were gypsies there from the thieves. mountains, and they, and, and they were kind of in a lot of trouble. And there was a there was a ranch in South Texas that was going to help them out so they kind of got Go them figure. out of jail and sent them over there to work legitimately <laughs> for oh, some wow. people and that's Sounds kind like of the mexicans that's, right? yeah and that's yeah. that's so kind of the, now it. now i'm I, and i'm official here damn uh, uh, that is an unofficial story <laughs> he's he's that is that that, that, that is a tale that. that's been handed down and and yes they came and worked the mcfadden ranch that would be fact <laughs> Exactly wow. that they came from the Pyrenees Mountains. That would be fact. The all the rest of that in between there, well, that was just maybe my uncles talking when they were having a few beers. So Dex, <laughs> Dex, now that you're having your coffee though, right. uh, what was the gig that you played with uh, Tom here? Because he doesn't remember much. We have to we help him. We played Fiesta. We did a few yeah. Fiesta shows oh, yeah. together. Um, back good. with uh, with Dave. Yeah, and, uh, David Williams. Renee Segura and Mickey. That's where I got Renee yeah. and Mickey. And, uh, I went and saw them at, yeah. at Fiesta. Mickey, I so had you did a couple Mickey of shows couple there? Of, yep, we did. We did I had made Mickey How do you feel about friends. playing with multiple bands? I mean, this is for all of y'all, but really for you, Dex. How do you feel about, you know, for me, I played with one band, and, and that was my claim to fame with Crystal Winter, right? But thereafter, I did my own little groove where I didn't dedicate myself, but I did do it for the reason of, study mm -hmm. like uh, 
home cooking, everybody knew they were earth, wind, and fire. So I went to go do their conga routine so that I could learn it, you know. And I studied Santana to do that, you know. Gotcha. So I branched off, and then the country, and then the jazz, and then the funk, and you know, it just went full circle. Well, what as we talked like? about my what age, do you like? I actually started playing um, with just one band for about 10, 10 years, 10, 11 years, doing all originals, and I was a grunge baby, right? We grew up... Uh, you were graduating when I was four years old, so I was, you know, later on. <laughs> That's I'm, what I'm trying I, to but, say. But I, 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 I got into rock and music more. So this is very peculiar, to, man, to right? Have so someone your age, right? So I had a, I had a, a band, an original band that was doing. He's on grain, everything. He can hardly speak. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing like more, <laughs> but it can heavier, heal really well. <laughs> you know, and uh, <laughs> what? Sorry, Larry. <laughs> we were Larry, part of the whole St. Mary Joe. Strip, like everybody else. We're doing St. Yeah. Mary Strip on the original oh, stuff. Oh yeah, I remember um, all that. Stuff. And then we took a break. Or we stopped because you know we're doing the, the 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 scene changed, and Mickey came up to me and asked me if I'd ever done covers before, and I had never thought about it. But I like music and I wanted Money. to play for fun. Yeah, yeah. And I said, so yeah. I mean, I had done a few with him, a couple of quick one-offs, stand up, go fill in or something. And uh, then he said, well, I'm getting together with some guys. I have some dates booked for Fiesta, and mm. can you learn covers? You know, he was asking me, and I'm like. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. First, here's a funny story. So, first uh, rehearsal we have. Yeah. Um, you know, these guys are polished in the scene, doing a, you know, doing a bunch of stuff, right? Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> sure. I was told. Are. I was told. <laughs> you know, I was told these guys are you know top. And, sure. And so he gives me a list. I have to look, songs Cheers, on a list that really hadn't even heard, heard before. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, mean, I probably have, but I had never sang it before. And um, we go to rehearsal. And I was very choppy, and I was very unsure. I was, you know, flipping through papers, the first, you know, rehearsal, the lyrics, kind of and way, catching up, and I'm behind. Kind of the way you were the other night. Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm just kidding. Yeah, exactly. I have show. lights on my face then, so I don't care. <laughs> but uh, after rehearsal, the, for Stone the, Temple Pilots. After probably. rehearsal, the next time, um, Mickey calls me and he says, "Hey, man, um, uh, the guys are kind of worried about you, you know." The guys are kind of worried that... I'm you know, worried about you right, right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I said, well, that's yeah, everybody. I go, what do you mean? He goes, oh, they're kind of worried. And, and uh, you know, it, uh, after going back and forth for a while, he goes, look, Dex, I'm giving you an out. And I was like, what? He goes, I'm giving you an out if you want to, you know, if you want to drop out so we can find someone else. I'm like, fuck Whoa, no. Man. I go, bro, right. I go, bro, I go, bro, I got this. I go, I got this. I go, hey, man. I go, these guys, I go, y'all played these songs for fucking ever, bro. Give me, I'll be, yeah. I got gotcha. you. I got, give me one more. I'll see you at the next rehearsal. Next rehearsal went much better. Oh, yeah. And then our shows, we fucking, I thought we kicked we, it out we, of the park, yeah, man. We, we knocked it out. So after, we the, did. after the it first set, Tom comes up to me. I don't know if you remember this. After the first set, he goes, I'm so glad we didn't get rid of your Dex. Thanks, man. <laughs> did you have to and vote I was on like, it? Damn. Did you have to vote on it, <laughs> that, Tom? No, I, there, there was no was vote. He, he, was he just he just came in and did his business. That's it, basically it. He came in it, and plus I shit I all over was, the place. There, <laughs> My there, business. There there was a a little bit of problem with your with your voice at the time. I think I think it like, sounded bad. There was like. Where, where, where you I'm just kidding. Like, had a cold or something? Help me, yeah, Jerry. Well, I was, that's it was right during it was, right? it was during Fiesta, and I was coming off like this respiratory allergy thing, and that's why I told him, I said, "No, I got this. I know what I can yeah, do, yeah. and I know that right now, unlike an instrument, you can just tune it the same every time. Yeah. If yeah. I'm not healthy, I'm not, I, yeah. I can't belt." And, and, uh, more and I think that, that that was more, more of it. That was, was that, and I was right. like, "This guy is good, but he, he's he's got some problems. Is his voice going to be okay?" And it came right. It came right through. Yeah. And 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 we we did do some fiesta gigs and actually those those were some pretty strong gigs. Now, yeah, you know, we were, don't have that problem were, though, do you? Very good. Singing. Uh, well, I mean, occasionally. You I sing have, a little bit. You got sometimes you got to sing. You know, especially if you're doing a lot of gigs that you're obligated to do. Yeah. And uh, there are going to be times when. Now, fortunately, don't hate me, guys. I have no allergies. I can't stand so, you. But, uh, <laughs> so the, the Man, mountain singer right and shit like that doesn't get to me. <laughs> nice. But there are times that you've sung multiple nights that your voice is a little tired and, and you don't have what you normally have. You just learn to make do yeah. with what you have at that particular time. It's kind of like what Dex was just talking about. He had to go through that, you know. It's just the right. thing. It, and the it, first time, though, a lot of a lot of it too was I didn't know these songs. Because, <laughs> yeah, they, they, <laughs> a lot of it too was I didn't know the songs. I was like, it was like, can you sing uh, uh, 
Proud uh, Mary. Sammy Hagar. You know, <laughs> I've heard uh, the song a million times. I'm like, which one? It's like <laughs> Sammy Hagar. You see, I'm like, I don't know. I'm gonna listen to it. I'll go listen. But that rehearsal, I was didn't even know the where he was at in it. And then we go and here we are playing it as a closer. But you were used to grind just what it, what the whole story was. Well, I start I started like wanting to play music with that style. But I'm a huge music aficionado. Beatles are my number here one. Here we go. Here we yeah. go. Uh, though here they have go. to be, right? They here have here to we be. go, though. The, the question yeah. of the day for this this November sure. birthday show, we're celebrating mine, Johnny Salcedo's, any Scorpio. But um, regarding why you got into music, we were talking about this. Jerry, let's start with you, man. Why did you get in? What made it happen for you? I will go it's, around. It's kind of a funny story. I went in... It was literally the summer of 69. That 1969, not 1869. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. I'm glad you cleared that yeah, up. They got it. Yeah, I, I, wasn't too, I wasn't too sure. I'm glad you let, let, I, let sure. it. <laughs> um, I had gone on what they nowadays call a play date. We didn't call it that. Oh. I'd just gone to hang out. Hang out a at play his date? House, and his older brother had a drum set at the house that they kind of shared. And uh, the kid that was in my class, he could play a little bit. And he got behind the drum set, and he did a yeah, the had a little five-piece kit, and he did a did a four-four roll, cymbal crash, and so he made it look easy. He said, "Here, do this." So I got back there. Well, I never played a drum set before. I couldn't do that. So I went and asked mommy and daddy that year because I was nine. Uh, Dad had already let the the clown out of the box that you know that about the Christmas thing. If there are any children listening, I won't ruin that for you. But uh, I had no illusions, so I asked mommy and daddy for a drum set. And ironically, Jeff had done something, and a kid showed him a guitar, so he got his first guitar, and I got my first drum set for Christmas of 1969. Wow! And that's when we started. That's incredible. That, that's a great story, by the way. Parents are, are lovely when they uh, support that kind of groove, especially well, my, when it wasn't happening back then. It yeah, wasn't my, happening back then, but they copped some of that Beatle buzz. We're going to talk to Dex. Dex, what turned you on into wanting to be the musician of which you've become? Um, looking cool, my uncle. Yeah. So growing up, my so looking good helps. <laughs> well, <laughs> looking yes, cool. Yes. I didn't say good. Yes, I said yes, looking yes, cool. Yes, yes. And I'm talking cool back when I'm a kid. What I saw was cool was my uncle Frank Guzman. He was a drummer in San Antonio. Frank Guzman. And Frank Guzman. He was a drummer. And uh, oh, probably know so that. as growing up, we lived right behind Lanier off Trinity Street. I and know. I, I know. I that lived. Guy. So my 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 mother and my <laughs> aunt <laughs> were single parents, and so me and my cousins would sit there. My 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 male cousin Victor, and my youngest aunt showed up, and for the first time I saw cool, my Uncle Frank had long hair, Fu Manchu mustache, bell bottoms, kiss t-shirt, walks in, <laughs> and he was about 17, 18, and he was a drummer. <laughs> and he, we went over to his apartment, and you could smell all the incense, and I didn't know why, right? Yeah. All the incense are going. I'm and, sure. uh, now. And I'm he sure had on the right wall, I'm he, sure he had incense. kiss, those, uh, those yeah. black light posters that were like felt, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, he had the La Semana oh, yeah. mirror, yeah. you know, mirror, uh, the feathers. I mean, and he was into Indians. He was into to, to rock and music. And he was showing this journey. He'd put it on the record, and he'd just play along with it. And we're just kids staring at him. And I just thought it was the coolest shit ever, man, looking at him. And then so me and my cousin, we'd get our mom's belts and some brooms. And we're playing guitar to kiss <laughs> on the radio with these big tower speakers in the living room. Yeah, seriously. No, yeah, the, and then yeah, as, and so I always liked music. And then as I got older, through middle school and high school, um, I never tried to do vocals or sing or anything. I love music, but I wasn't practicing it. Really? And went to a party. And it was after Nirvana came out, but I heard sex type thing from STP. And I fell in love with the band and just that sound. So it was a little heavier, but it's still more rock. It wasn't as grunge, but I, uh, and then we started singing it and it just felt like I could hit those notes or I was being told and I just continued. 
what, and that's what why I'm an SDP fan now. What was right? the band that was happening in what '75? I think the no, no, Partridge no, no, family no, no. was hitting really no. hard. What, huh? <laughs> the Partridge family was hitting really hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Set, no, well, this is about is this is like '79, your... '80. I'm, <laughs> I'm about kidding. five years old. <laughs> five, 80, 81, 82. Well, who, who were you listening to when you thought I was inspired to be that way? You know, uh, were you thinking uh, Stones or the Beatles or I mean, because you're a lot younger than us, right? We're, well, we're thinking. You well, know, from like like the story I just said from a kid's standpoint seeing cool and liking music was your uncle was awesome was my uncle wow um, he's probably lived Def a very Leopard, sheltered life Def Leppard Guns N' Roses okay but okay. I was in middle school now we're, we're hitting as far as the rock because before that it was a lot of pop and then it kind of morphed <laughs> into yeah wow. I loved Def Leppard was huge they were great they were you know they were great and uh the Friday night video fights on MTV between like Quiet Riot and <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, remember those? Remember yeah, those. Yeah, the Quiet yeah, Riot and like those. every Friday was different two bands and Def Leppard and Motley Crue were always topping those things and winning. You know, yeah. um, so just seeing that. But as far as uh, uh, wanting to play, the S STP was the, the first band that want, I wanted but to play. The, the reason I wanted to was sing. to be cool. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. that's, no, but that's yeah. what you I said. thought it looked cool, but then the that, but then the reason became more yes, but then the reason became more heartfelt because uh, I dived into Zeppelin, which is all pre me, right? This is this is I wasn't I wasn't they weren't popular. They were broken up already. Uh, John Lennon got killed. I didn't even know the significance when I was a kid because I didn't know wow. what they were. So That's I kind of dove criminal. into the Beatles, dove into Zeppelin, dove into Pink Floyd, <laughs> and just started right at the end of high school and started getting into that. And that's what inspired me then to continue the music. Well, and check there. this group out. We want to get over to, to yeah. Tom over here. Tom, what inspired you to get into music? Yeah, I would say it was my, my brother-in-law, Frank. He had a Gibson Marauder and a custom tuck and roll 215 I guess they were like, I think they're 60 watt or 100 watt. And he played on this thing. Yeah. And, and him and my sister were moving to Connecticut. My sister got, a, a, got accepted to Yale University. And they were taking everything with them. And, and at the, I literally would. in the driveway, they could not load this guitar and amplifier in. <laughs> and, I, and, and my brother-in-law told well, me, I'm going to leave story. this with you. And, and I said... <clears throat> Well, I'm going to learn how to play it. And, and, and at the time, I was not very good at it, but wanted, was wanting to try. And then he said, I, he said, I will give it to you if you learn how to play. Wow. I, wow. Ne I never stopped playing it. I, ne I, I never I mean, stopped. I, could throw I would down. come home from school play and play that <clears throat> guitar. My mom guitar. was like, turn that damn thing off. And I would pull the jack right out of it, throw it over the amplifier, kick the kick it off, and keep playing. I, I would not stop. Wow. I would you were not disobedient. stop. It would not stop. It would not stop. You were and when my brother-in-law came back, I had that thing wide open with the old uh, Electro Harmonix uh, uh, Big Muff Pie uh, fuzz Jeez, pedal running fuzz through pedal, it yeah. and was just ripping uh, Zeppelin uh, power Black chords Sabbath. through it. Wow. And my brother-in-law <laughs> came in and just looked at me and shook shook his head and walked away and I never talked with him again about that guitar or that amplifier. <laughs> They've been mine ever since. In fact, the the custom tuck and roll I sold, I sold it and I shouldn't have. But I just recently bought another one. Wow. So I bought ah. a, a silver one with a black head. I just just picked it up a uh, about about 2 months ago and I still have the Gibson Marauder and the, that was my first Guitar and, wow. and I, I really dug at it the That's first incredible. time, and I, and I would, I would not stop. But later on, I ran into two really good guitar players. The first one was a was a guy named Bruce Pipkin. I had my my brother playing drums with us. Pipkin and name we, sounds familiar. And we could not find a, a bass player who could keep up. And I just said, I'm buying a bass. And I have this custom tuck and roll 215. That's why I and have I'm my bass. And I'm just going to run it through there and, play, and played the bass. I, I, I think it was a, it was an Aria Pro 2 Cardinal Series four string I bought for two hundred dollars, and and started playing bass. And then later on, I ran into David Williams, and and uh, yeah, and he he is a, a very strong guitar player, and and yeah, he's good. And and I and I hi David. And I yeah, hey Dave, what's, what's up? up, David? But. But I and I kept playing and kept playing bass and have 
moved on to five strings and now six string. Okay, my bass. turn. I was in the third grade, did a talent show. That was a good story, I was, though. I think I was barely seven. <laughs> I was barely seven. So if you if you do the math, I'm 66. I've been playing for 59 years. Stop that. Not cat. Wow. <laughs> well, I, and minute. I caught my own drumstick. I, I told you up. when I started, it was 69. See so. what I'm saying? So I carved my own drumsticks, and they were thicker than that. Okay. <laughs> At least I knew what a stick looked like. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well, you're a drummer. You know what two Bs are. They're tree trunks. Two B and not two B, yeah. yeah. Or Compared to, to these, Tree yeah. trunks. There are two of them, yeah. At least. At least. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, I... I oh, did, wait, wait, wait. Uh, we we got to talk about this real quick. Most memorable, silly moments, only for, but for the sake of time. Do you have something on your mind that happened at a gig that was probably the weirdest thing? And, and it's, it's a big hit on the show. I got, most I got memorable, the, silly moments. I got the perfect thing. Tell me, tell uh, me, tell me, please. We, we were out with, uh, with Emerald in the 80s. No way. And most of the gigs we did were opening for national acts. They were either coming through or doing the Cardi circuit, if you all remember the Cardi circuit. Pat Travers. El Paso, Dallas, Houston, sure. San Antonio, Austin. Uh, and we were here, but we would always, we'd just come back from Houston. We would always rent the same 14-foot motorhome to go out in. <laughs> so we would pulled up behind Cardi's, and um, the original other guitar player, not Larry McGuffin, but the other guy, I won't name names, Okay. Mm -hmm. Because this was a criminal act. Uh, uh -oh. and, and the bass player at the time, now his name was Robert Chavez. Okay. He, his stage name was Bobby Chapters, which like we would just giggle already. behind his back. But anyway, long story short, they did not like each other. That's not a good thing. It's the, the fiery, passionate hate, especially what? from the guitar player to the bass player. What? Many reasons for that. They just, he just didn't like it. Okay. So... One night, I, I get done with uh, we get done with sound check, and those two those two take off first. So we're piddling around, and I go back, and I open the door, and I climb on up the stairs of the motor coach, and the guitar player has Robert by the neck, <laughs> both hands, and his arms are. <laughs> oh my God! If you could only see and, the face, and, we could get a close up. <laughs> that was a hell of a face shot. And Robert was blue, and his eyes were bulging. <laughs> the man was going to kill him. Oh my God! I was the only one there, kill so the I, I immediately ran up and did it. <clears throat> what? And and broke his grip on him. My gosh! And and Robert was able to sit again? down, and I told the guitar player, I who I will backwards. not name. Larry stage? knows who he is. They were on stage? Huh? They were still on the sound check stage? No, they were in the no, truck. No, oh, the sound check the was over. They were in the, in the motorhome. They were throwing <laughs> yes. down okay. the truck. Yes, so I, I told the guitar player, Paya, get out of here. You know, buena bye. <laughs> and I was able to get Robert calmed down. And, but he had some bruising. <laughs> And he had to wear a, a high collar for, for several Sissy. weeks. But, wow. yeah, Sissy. So you wanted, you wanted something morbid or, or more memorable and maybe a little bit grisly. That was, yeah, that, that was, a, yeah, that Rico that was a criminal act. I mean, in, 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 in 50 go. years of playing gigs, I've seen a lot of wild things, but that is probably one of the wildest. It sounds almost killer. Now, we did, we did do a... Ouch. <laughs> a private show, uh, pre-show party, pre-tour party for the Scorpions and Wasp, where all of their equipment was already packed in the trucks. And by this time, uh, Jack Orban, Stone City, who uh, we were attached yeah. to, hey, Jack. was uh, running the Storm? Losers Club, Storm? which was down on West Avenue. It, it was called something else. It was a rock saloon at one time. Uh, so he closed the club for a private party. And there was exotic dancers and fire trucks Yay. and drugs of many varieties. And okay. Hell so yeah. we brought our equipment because theirs was in the trucks ready to go the next morning. And uh, Rod Morgenstern and Scorpions and all the guys were jamming on our equipment, my white Ludwigs. Yeah. And um, I want to charge them. Yeah, Rod, uh, <laughs> they were road hard and hung up right wet next. by that time because <laughs> I never had cases. Uh, Rod, great guy, great drummer, but he's left-handed. 
So he oh, kind of, he didn't know who I was. So you you got to switch these things around no, for me. He couldn't do it himself, <laughs> obviously. So I switched the drums around so a left-hand guy could play them. And uh, uh, he, he said, these, these things look like garbage cans. I said, yeah, well, you know, just wait till you play them. Because they did. They, I never had cases for them, and I'd had them since 1969. Um, but uh, then this was in the 80s. <laughs> Uh, but his, it was a it wild party. He loved them after he played them because they were just they're well, incredible sure. drums. Damn lovely. And uh, at one point, myself and Klaus Minus singing, uh, Rudy's playing guitar, Francis is playing bass, and a couple other guys, uh, maybe a couple of the guys from Wasp, uh, or was it Winger they were in? I forget. It's been a long time. Do they all want to uh, stab like, each other? Well, hey, it's a jam session. What do you know? So <laughs> we're doing Surrender by Cheap Trick. Okay, cool. And it's... It was a pretty cool experience getting up there to jam with those guys. Oh, yeah. And it was a wild party, Those are big acts. Too. Those are big acts. Moving yeah. on to Dex, do you have a most memorable, silly moment for me? And if not, we'll move on to, to Larry. I mean, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> that, that has got to be my we'll most memorable, silly moment. That's what Tom formerly known as Larry. I was Larry. impersonating Larry. We're going to come back to Larry, him. Larry, Larry. Come back to him. <laughs> Larry, I hear your last name is, it means horse thieves. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. <laughs> That's right. Larry Horsley. <laughs> yeah, go, 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 no, I have, I mean, Look him up online. <laughs> um, memorable moment. I don't know if it's silly. silly. most memorable S yeah, silly moment. Silly moment. Um, one that comes to mind was when, he, when he brought up the motorhome was back in my original band. Oh, man, back in 2004 or five, we won a radio contest in Houston to play this three-day festival that was going to have a bunch of more of the 80s, Dangerous Toy Slaughter. Uh, the headliners were Sammy Hagar one night, uh, Twisted Sister, Alice Cooper. Okay. Right? Cool. All right, so we were like ecstatic, and a buddy of mine was going to lend me this really nice RV that he had. Huge, that expanded. It was a like, nice, yeah, to let me go up there with the band. And we're like, cool, now we're, we're relying on that. So I would have been happy in my Mitsubishi, man. Well, I, we were going to go either way, <laughs> but we were like, it'd be really cool. And the guy was like, he was a follower of the band. He's like, oh, I'll let you use oh, it, that's no cool. problem. And we're like, yes, you know, no problem. We're going to take off on you know, Thursday because the festival was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we'll leave Thursday after work. We'll be cool. there, yada, yada. We have an envelope of credentials in there. You know, we have an RV parking pass. It's not necessarily with the headliner bands, but we have this RV parking pass for this park. Anyway, long story short, the, the, it's a bust. We can't use that RV after all. We find out Thursday afternoon. I'm scrambling to find a vehicle. What are we going to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A buddy of mine who owns some U-Haul places. What a booger. He said, man, I have an RV you can borrow, and, and you, I'll let you use it. And then the guy, he's like, it's not as big as this other one, but it'll work, you know, and it'll fit the band. And Okay. I pull up to go pick up this UV, and it's huge, rent me, you know, written on the side of it, you know, because it's, it's advertising, you know. But I'm like, ah, screw it, fuck it, we're taking it, no big deal. F um, it, there's that F word again. Yeah, there we go. So <laughs> we head out out Thursday, and we're young, you know, and having a great time. We're going to play this festival, and so we were partying in the RV, you know, and we get no way. closer, and we're like, hey, man, Dex, you pull in because you know what's going on, you talk well, and... You have the, the pack. You're the, you're the least sign. Yeah, so we pull, but <laughs> right, but uh, I don't, I'm not sure I was, but we pull over, I swap, and then we get to, and there's a couple entrances here, and I just see artist entrance, and I said, ah, and it was a line. And I'm like, nah, and I just went around it, I'm going to artist entrance, I'm just gonna keep going until somebody stops me. So we pull in all around, and we come across this, these two kids and sitting there, and I just pull up and say, hey man, we're at the band, we're playing tomorrow and Saturday, and I got all this shit here in this this envelope i'm not sure what it's for we need to park we're tired we're driving in you know help me get through there quickly and the kids just oh yeah yeah, yeah. you know just looking around and they're talking to each other and i'm like man can come on man we, we're, we're we're dying here you know we got to get through and <laughs> uh, uh, he goes you have the red bat right whatever's in there's in there buddy i don't know that's what's in there and we just got to get you know and he's they're just starting to freak out and say so, okay well and he goes he has red man let him through like, all right let's let him through so we turn around he goes follow that path we pull in well here's our rent me rv Tons of badass RVs, right? I just pull off the farthest. I pull off to the farthest end side. I pull up. And, and you're the freaking you home. So Queen's Reich is next to us, and then there's Slaughter, and then there's Twisted Sister. Oh, there. We're all out, and we just all get out. Bear cans fall out. This big <laughs> six pack, Go. six pack, represent, looking, brother, looking like represent. looking like the movie Six Pack, you know, Brewster. I got this this with a bagel basically, and beer cans are falling out. And we just had a great night partying with all these greats that we've seen and loved. <laughs> so in the morning, 
all I hear is, you know, and I look up and it's the windshield of the of the Winnebago, you know, or the, or the trailer, and it's a security guard. You don't belong on, here. Out the window, what's going on? I'm like, huh? You know, I fell asleep in the driver's seat of the. You know, the and I'm like, what's what? He's like. You don't belong here, buddy. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, I what is, I'm like, what do you mean, man? I got this red tag. <laughs> get this shit out of here. Well, I would. <laughs> like, it's all right. We already did it. Good. I'm like, hey, I'm we're good. With, hey, man, we're with the band. <laughs> Thank we're you, playing Larry. today. He goes, you're not with these bands. You know? <laughs> get this Winnebago. We got out. We finally saw like the damage because it looks they're great trailers, and then ours just looks <laughs> over here to the right, man. You know. Uh, so that was a memorable. I got tons of stories from that weekend. It was great. Met a lot of great people. Sammy was amazing. All sorts of people. But the entrance to it was just awesome. With all, you know, <laughs> that, with that, that is funny. Now speaking, bringing bringing over here to yeah, Larry I, I, slash I, Tom. I, I, th- I think when 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 we went and and uh, Wolfpack, I was playing with Wolfpack, and we took Wolfpack. Rick Sanford, Tom and, and, we, and we were doing all and true. we were doing a, a opening. For uh, uh, it, it was Frank Marino at at the Cadillac Club. You know Frank Marino. Yeah, don't you yeah. Know and, and 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 I got a chance to to meet the guy, and and, and I, I wasn't like all over him. And say, hey Frank, how's it going? Good, good to meet you. This and that, and and, and all this stuff is going on. And we're getting ready to go on, and, and Frank has taken a long time getting his stuff together, and he he had his pedal board. I think it was like. 15 feet long and it, it just opened up and it, it, it looked like Frankenstein in there and he was just messing with it and resoldering stuff and just taking what? his time and all this stuff is go is going on there but but uh, later on Frank Marino went to play and he was incredible and I was standing there with with David Williams on in, on the side watching him and they had gone at by the end of the night they had gone like almost 45 minutes over they that like all the staff was pissed off because marina was still playing mm. and 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 i was standing there i was watching uh frank marino play and he may have been like the best blues virtuoso or from blues to virtuoso guitar player i had ever seen i've never seen anything like that he took the virtuoso world and the blues world and combined them together he, like he did nobody else. Special. It was it was phenomenal. And and Williams was in front of me, pacing back and forth, <laughs> back and forth, back and forth. And I and I was like he he was like he 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 was like um, he, he he was emotionally challenged at that moment. I never seen him pace back and forth and back and forth. And he comes up to me and he's like, nobody can stop him. <laughs> <laughs> goes back and forth, back and forth, and he comes back. He says he can't stop himself. Oh my god! <laughs> so he goes going back and forth, back and forth, and I'm just looking at it. And, and I turned around to another partner of mine, a friend of mine who came. The concert's Joe, over. Joe, Joe Gonzalez. Is it Joe Gonzalez? What's his name? Joe. He was standing next to me, What's and that? I said. Frank Marino, my God, and he goes, "No, Frank Marino, my God." Wow! <laughs> and, and we're and we're watching them play, but then so Ir- basically he held up the show yeah. because his number was just so good. Yeah, well, he he he, he and played, it mesmerized you. He 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 played the show. It, and it was great. Fell out. It was great. There's there's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes on along I'm with sure. that and. And and, and uh, I'm, I was contemplating pulling it all out, but it involves a lot of other people and stuff that is illegal. And I'm just going to leave that <laughs> part there. You can't imagine. Don't, I'm, I'm going to say there. this. Yeah. You can't imagine what was going on when we were with Rick Sanford. Oh, yes, I can. In, oh, oh, yes, in, I can. In the back, <laughs> yes, in the can. back yes. room with the waitresses Present. bringing in the, the food and some drinks for us to hang out with. And I was like, Wow. <laughs> okay, my but turn. But I'm just gonna let that go. My that was turn. Fun. Yeah. Teen Canteen, 1960. I don't know what. Uh, you know. Uh, yeah, we what, did the 13 70s floors, 13 teen floor canteen, elevators. Yeah. You know when when uh, ZZ Top was ZZ Top back then. 13 floor elevators. Anyway, we would do Battle of the Band shows at Teen Canteen. Sam Kinsey. Shout out to you, Sam. He brought up a lot hey, of Sam. great, lot of great guys, right? And he's throwing down another get together. The girls are in December, so keep your ears out for that. Now, we were setting up. Claire and ourselves were playing. That's Vinnie Coy. You know Vincent Coy. Uh, yeah. Okay, so Vinnie Coy 
and he's a protege of Galen Niles. And uh, you know, we were talking about him. Galen taught a lot of the guys, a lot of guitar players how to play, because he was the only one that knew scales. So anyway, that's where that right. came from. Um, partner man was doing scales, and but my brother had this casino amp, 200 watt, uh, 410 inch, just 200 watt, man, but solid state. And uh, partner man, Vinny, had a uh, 68 twin Fender tube amp. And Vinny really liked the way my brother's amp sounded because we added a 15 inch. We, we did a 15 inch JBL and just added it into another cabinet and stacked it so it looked like a Marshall. Sounded great. And so Vinny said, I wonder what it would sound like if we hooked up piggyback. And so piggyback the, the twin with the casino and they hooked Bob and Vinny <laughs> eloquently hooked that up. And then, uh, you know, it came down and tested and I think my brother Bob had first rain and he throws down some kind of solo from holy heck. And then the Vin man, Vinny, gets his chance and throws down all his scales and <laughs> the whole crowd is like, oh my God, it literally sounded like two marshals together. I mean, they, it's a phenomenal sound I've never heard, probably will never hear it ever again, at Teen Canteen. And as soon as that's over with, they both throw down, all of a sudden you hear, Bob Ocampo, come to the office, please. It's Sam Kinsey. <laughs> it's Sam Kinsey, and we're all going, oh, shit. No, no. And so it happened. We got reprimanded. You, and, you remember what would happen if you got too loud? Well, yeah, those what? two. Those we, almost, we almost destroyed the place, man. Between Vinny and my brother Bob Ocampo, they, they hooked up a monster. And so it was two bam and... Solid state. Oh man! Well, what a combination. That's all I can say. You know, I, I I love tube amps and I love solid state, but you put them together and man, what a sound! What a crunch! So that's my most memorable silly moment was getting cursed cool. by Sam Kinsey just before we had to go on, and Clear was great. Those were great days. A lot of great bands, Straw Dogs. Um, there's so many oh, bands. Yeah, Straw Dogs. Can you remember any of those bands? I remember that, Straw Dogs. Yeah, but I mean, more more than that. There were Excalibur, mm -hmm. uh, Alexis, <laughs> my Alexis, band, so you should have been your and, girlfriend, and Breaker, <laughs> and Breaker, and yeah. Winter, Winter Cat. That. Yeah, Winter Cat. Winter Cat. And Winter to, Cat. To, yeah, and John Winter. Grell and Chris Watkins. Yeah. yeah. And Dex, he doesn't know a damn thing of what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, he, no, I'm yeah. like, what? Yeah, no, but when I was playing the strip, the, the scene there was. You know, a little bit harder, low-key, Medicine Tongue, Meek, Element, Sentence, the band that I was in. Um, yeah, you know, hey. there was kicking, but that was the last time that, right, right, that was the last time when you were still handing out flyers to get people to shows. Burning desires. You know? Now's your chance to have a burning desire. If you have one last thing you want to say, say it now and forever hold your peace. Now, you're going to come back sooner or later. We're going to throw down. We're going to do a little something, something. Now, you, you all are, are now, you know, veterans of the show. So if you have any burning desires, for me personally, it's all the listening audience that has been with us from the very get-go. 13 years ago, I started this thing at the Cove, and, and you know, it's just progressed with the help of uh, Louis Antoine, our, our new engineer, uh, coming through Marius Perone. And then I get this awesome opportunity to sit down with these guys and, and sit and talk about our lives. And that's what the show is really all about. It's kind of focusing on, on how we've been and what we're doing. Now, just one last thing, because you're actually, Jerry, you're my uh, special guest today. And we didn't talk about Pig Nation. This oh, is a new nice. recording through Marius Perone. So this is my burning desire. Talk about Pig Nation, brother. Well, Pig Nation is new, the new original project slash old original project. We originally had it about 25 years ago. And Damn, that's uh, old. Yeah. But, but we've some got, good uh, memories never, they don't, we've in got, time, they, yeah, they we've, actually get better. Yeah. Oh, cool. They We've do. got uh, 20 original songs, nice. and uh, they're 20, all finished. Nice. We're going to take uh, probably about 14, 15 best, put them on a CD. Uh, we need a singer. Want to talk I'm, to you I'm, about that? I have several. I have Been several. I was, I was listening right to there. Pig Nation in the car yeah. over here, the, what you sent me. I wasn't but, uh, sure. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna, I want to throw it down with you guys, too, but I'm just telling you, there's some things here that you know are very dynamic. So Yeah. And uh, other than other than that, I would say 
Uh, thanks for having me. I'm honored. Oh, man. Uh, I'm also appreciative of all of the great musicians over How many years that? that I've played with and performed with. How about the guys that have been on the show? Huh? How about the guys? He's like, huh? Yeah. Who cares Tom about them? Tom and Dex. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's like, I'm special guest today. What are you talking about? No, yeah, show. wait a minute. He's special guest. He's special guest. What about him? He's not even wearing a jacket. For I know, right? I was like, <laughs> guys, guys from Emerald and the Bad Boys and Wayne Wilson. Shout out to Wayne Wilson. Wayne Wilson. Great okay. singer. Uh, and Pig Nation. And I was with Ultra briefly and... I'm just appreciative to, to the fans over the years and all the great musicians that I've been able to work with. And I'm grateful for you for having me. Absolute, here. man. It's my pleasure. Thanks, Ed. And, and Dex, shout Burning out desire. to, yeah, right. to all your That was a question, friends. Burning Desire. Um, <laughs> your Burning Desire. I'd sure. like to... Shout out to your friends included. Um, shout out to all my friends. Shout out to all the bands I played with. Uh, original band, Sentence, Texas Peak Floyd, Stone, um, still remains my current STP tribute that I'm currently that, that performing in. That threw me in. all off when I saw your, your page. I was like, who's he with? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so well, I've been, you know. 10 bands. Right, right. Uh, Burning Desire, though, I would love to play Second Gardens. Many of you that have been playing for a while, probably maybe I played there before. Um, I played the Tobin, which was great, but I'd like to do, before I stop playing, I would love to play Sutton Gardens, hopefully with some of you guys. We need, we need to bring wow. it put back. Put a show together we need to bring it back. with yeah, you guys. You know, so maybe that's, maybe that's what we could do. We could put a show together and bring back Sutton Gardens. Yeah. Because there's yeah. a reason why that place exists, and we were it at that time. Uh, it, it's time to really show. Yeah, before this world. last show with Ultra place. that just, just, just happened, I was doing my homework and looking for, for uh, no, sound from them. There and there I, there's forever. a nice video of them online in 76, I think. At Sunken Gardens, so yeah. playing Sunken Gardens, Homer, and I'm just looking day, like Homer. I remember seeing shows there. You know, mm -hmm. I remember going to seeing STP there and Food Fighters my age, but it was great, and I would just love to play that stage. You know? yeah. Tom, yeah, well, I remember your burning climbing, desire, uh, your your final shout out to everybody. I, I remember climbing over the back fence at the Sunken Gardens. <laughs> 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 come on, man, come on, come on. There's a special treatment there. I, I know there's, I know there's a lot of you out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done it, Absolutely, done it, and and well, and 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 yeah, and and that's great. Uh, playing with Ultra right now and seeing how far back they go and yeah. what they were actually doing at the time I think that they old. were doing and, and listening to all the stuff <laughs> and bringing it together they it played was great though it, it was it Phenomenal. was uh, really? it, it was eye opening when I saw what they were actually doing and from what era they were doing it in uh -huh. and and it makes it and it reminds me of you know, of the great era of music that we came from 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 the the late sixties, early seventies, and K Mac Kiss Radio tunes. and all that music. Those last three commercial tunes were all Crystal Winter songs. We had played them all from uh, well, all those three commercial tunes which yeah. you guys played were all songs that was Crystal Winter covered. Just wanted to say, but yes. yeah, I'm so sorry to have interrupted. No, that, it, uh, we're, that we're talking about how far back they go, and yeah. we're talking about me. I'm going back forty two freaking ass yeah. years. It, it, well, the, the, that they that they wrote what they wrote, and then you, and you mentioned Galen Niles was was actually one of the great instructors here in San Antonio. Was, Many yeah. guitar players learned the real shit. Now that was from, a talk. from Galen. That yeah. was a talk over at yeah. Fitzgerald. There was just a mumble. It was a word yeah. going around. I was like oh, saying, was, "Well, damn straight, this is why." That's why I bring up you know Vince, mm -hmm. Vinnie, Vinnie Coy, because Vincent Coy was with Clear, and it was a whole different band. But he, they were cousins. But if I was to mention a great desire, oh, one of the great desires that, that I have, and it's, it, it kind of isn't for anything, but for people to know what it was like in the early middle 70s, if I had a pack of cigarettes and a couple of beers and a new cassette of a, of a new band that was out, now, we well, held that now. cassette till midnight because we were listening to K-Mac Kiss radio till they went off the air. And just riding around in San Antonio and listening to that music and then realizing after I moved to Miami, I moved to Seattle, I moved to other places, I asked other people who are my age yeah. about what they heard when Give they were young. Kiss came and, back. and they did not have they did not have that experience. No, they we didn't. Had. They didn't. And it would Kiss, be my great K -Mac, desire KTFM, for people to really understand. I don't know how many other bands there were. I mean, yeah. uh, shows, and, radio and, talk shows. And the shows. other thing radio was, shows, is, is, as soon as I got old enough to get into the bars, I went to go see bands play, and, and it, was, it was you guys. And there, you there have was it. nobody who was That's getting close to the stage <laughs> without some real chops. 
Amen. No, nobody was nobody was going out there and playing unless they could really play because oh, we the music that note, they were man. playing from that era demanded that you had great drums, great vocals, and great guitars. Great and vocals, that, and that's absolutely. where I came from. And 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 like I said, one of my great desires would be for people to really uh, to be able to explain to people because you can't what it was like living in that era. You know, we would go pull up at the Food City parking lot, and all the cars would park in a big circle. They would all open up their trunks playing K Mac Kiss Radio. <laughs> yeah. And we'd sit there and throw frisbees to each other because we we're too young to go anywhere else. And, yeah. and and we were having fun and drinking. And the cops would come by and, and ride around a circle around all of us and then drive away <laughs> because we weren't the kids who were making a problem. We were the kids who were just loving the music that we were hearing. Yes. And 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 it was just a, a scene. And a time that, that, and it's it really it really was a great time. Hey, and the the '60s were pretty cool too. I saw yes. the Beatles. I saw the I, Beatles I on Ed Sullivan them. show yes. in 1964. Well, I, remember, I was four years old. Yeah, I was a, 1960s, right? Yeah, 1960s. yeah. yeah. I woke yeah. Up about not, yeah. not the 1860s. 1960s. I woke up 72, man. I woke but yeah, up 72. You, you asked me earlier about what was my on inspiration. Kind of a blur. Uh, seeing that was. Uh, now, my father was horrified, especially by John Lennon. My mother was fascinated. <laughs> but uh, that was what kind of put the bug in my ear. Yeah. And uh, trying to do the roll around the kid's drum set yeah. in 69 kind of finished off putting the bug together. Yeah. But, yeah. My little trip was Ringo's intro. She loves you, yeah. That's all he had. But it, there, that was like, and, I want to play drums. And <laughs> play it right hand, but it lead with the left hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. The left but yeah. he was a left-handed drummer. Nobody knew that was his uh, nuance. It was it was a, just a normal nuance. That's drummers one of the things that. that makes him one of the hardest drummers yes, to emulate. Duplicate. Absolutely. You, you think it's, it's because easy. Because you, you, you right. can do the same role it's easy, right-handed. Yeah, and it just sounds won't sound different. The same. It won't sound quite the same, but you you can deal with it. You can deal with it. I have. Yeah, I'm not like you, Jerry. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this guy can play everything and anything. No. You know? I love the shucks, guy. man. <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> and I play a Yamaha. Thanks, and he's a DW guy, and yeah. and, and he, he doesn't play. Ch he doesn't do t chopsticks. Uh, Ernie, Ernie Durawa. Now this is a Texas Tornado guy, but I think those are actually production uh, giveaways. You know. There is signature production yeah. giveaways. Either that or they're Timbali sticks. That's all. Innovative I percussion. Well, I'll tell you what. I remember walking in the covers first practice ass. with this guy on the drums, and I was like, oh, wow, he's got that. <laughs> and, he's got that. And, and, we just, and we kept going. I was like, okay, there's going to be some strong drums in there. So a lot of people that. don't know. I, I remember can throw down, my man. first gig with this guy. And I was like, damn, he's got that. I, th I believe that was the gig you were talking about when I was said, I'm so glad <laughs> yeah. we got After we got on stage, yeah. yeah. After we got on stage. It helps that you're younger. And these guys are Because you have better players. lungs than we do. What's that? You have better lungs than we do. I can guarantee, I can guarantee <laughs> well, you. Okay. You know, also, also being a front man isn't just about having lungs, there though, because you, you can, there you know, you, you look at Mick Jagger, you look at John Lennon. These guys didn't have operatic voices, right? Yeah. They're not, yeah, yeah. They're not your singer. Sure. But but they are a, a, a sound, vocalist and frontman. So part maker. of my job is to get crowd going, is to get hype, is to move the masses with you know with the music going. And I enjoy doing yeah, that. Yeah, I was about to you say know, that I must enjoy be fun. doing that. You know, <laughs> I don't do that. That's you really know, what I, I saw the other night. And, and, I saw you really uh, leading in that forum where you wanted to uh, emulate the Stone Temple Pilot groove. You know, if nothing else, it was an emulation of. And it's not the right. exact groove. Correct. But you get what you come out to see, and that, that's exciting music, note for note stuff. Pena throwing down Mickey, uh, all the guys that were there with you tonight, I mean, that night. That's what prompted this show on San Antonio Musicians Talk Show Network, birthday Scorpio month night. What do y'all think all about right. that? Um, Pretty uh, solid, huh? Yeah, another Heineken. No. <laughs> we, got, we got more, That's man. That's think about it. <laughs> and with that said... Because he said, I didn't get on your birthday. Dude's like, got a oh, mini keg in the sink, okay? I, mean, yeah. I, I know, I, know, I, know I need to bring another one by one day. Andy, Andy Garza, <laughs> my pimpon. I, I'm starting a new band called Los Pimpones. Los Pimpones? Los Pimpones. Yeah, Los Pimpones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. The pimps. Yeah. The pimps in <laughs> Spanish. I am... <coughs> The Grand Pimpon. No. Uh, yes. Pimpon. Only, I, grande only pimpon. I can yeah. say who are pimpettes, 
Who are pimponitos? <laughs> pimponotos. <laughs> pimposotos. <laughs> and they go on and on and on. And all you guys would be like uh, uh, pimponettis. Pimponettis. Yeah. Okay. So I'm the only one that can say these things. I just want to. I, I, I'm, I'm almost sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> Is, uh, oh, Niners, though, they're going, what are you talking so, about? What is it? Pimpon, ponton, what are we here? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 You know, really throw them off. Maybe throw in, a, throw in some accordion. Some and, right and this is, for, for your, lead this is your next band. This is probably probably next band. You show. might be playing. Gotcha. You might oh, sing shit. a lead. I'm just saying. <laughs> all you guys are invited <laughs> to join. <laughs> the accordion is a pentatonic. You are lying. the band as I go. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, it, okay. It is suggestive of a great many things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what we are. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, that's there what you we go. are. Somebody had to say it. You know, we're going to have to sound off because time's about up. So. I think this has been a fabulous show. Uh, happy Scorpio Month to everybody. Everybody, happy Scorpio Month to everybody. All right, happy Scorpios. Thank you, Phil Lewis, our engineer. And right. uh, shout you. out from San Antonio Musicians Talk Show Network. All right. I just simply want to say go out and go do something good for somebody today because we're out to change the world one day at a time. Ain't that right, man? That is right. right. One yes, laugh, sir. one chuckle. No more sadness, no more sorrow, man. Wow. We're going to share our world. We're going to make it a happy one. How about that, guys? I love nice. that. Thank, Thank you, that. sir. Good. Let's Thank do you. that. All right. A lot of love, Pig Nation. All the guys. Larry here. All right. <laughs> like okay. I said, I'm in town. That's why he said Larry, and I was shook his hand. All right. He's <laughs> all right. Larry, people. I love these guys. Thank God they can take a joke. Hey, with that said, where the heck out of here? Another Heineken, please. All right. Peace. 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 Peace.